What do you think is cheesy? <laughs> the cheesy show on A2, that was 10 number three. I think there's term limits on tooties. I think that was Stravinsky's problem with Fantasia as yeah. well. <laughs> Penny G is pretty cheesy, right? I'm not gonna try and answer pretentiously. I don't think that's cheesy. I think it's a little cheesy. <laughs> Here's what I wanna know. What do we mean when we call a piece of music cheesy? Is it just a word to express one's opinion of something? Or are there specific musical qualities tied to this word? So the cheese, let me tell you. As musicians, we generally want to avoid sounding cheesy. The word really doesn't carry that much positivity and yet, it's quite complex because it really depends on so many different things. Here's the definition of the word used informally, cheap, unpleasant, or blatantly inauthentic. Urban Dictionary. Cheesy, this is an important word and nobody has it right yet. Trying too hard, unsubtle, trying to elicit a certain response from a viewer, listener, audience, etc. Okay, I guess the video's done. <laughs> Let's see what some of my musician friends and colleagues have to say about this. Hans, what makes something cheesy? I'm not entirely sure why Nari would ask me this and it's a little boring why Nari would ask me this, but my thought is that there is a difference between sim sentimental and emotional. Uh, Ridley Scott always used to say to me, sentimentality is unearned emotion. And I think sentimental is cheesy and emotional is authentic. I think there's a self-conscious uh, cheekiness occasionally where people are trying too hard to point to exactly what they want, want you to go. Now, oh, you're supposed to laugh right here. We're gonna go wah, 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 or something like that. Cheesy music is stuff that sticks to the brain. It's like real kind of an earworm where in, in the best of worlds, it's a tool used by excellent talent to get something memorable. And in the worst of worlds, it's someone who just doesn't know how to do anything better. Especially performers. You know, you could have a piece of music that can be performed in a cheesy way, which is some unbridled, unwarranted, emotional inflection. Probably more criminal acts have been perpetrated with Rachmaninoff's mu music than with anybody else's music, just by playing it in a cheesy way. Right. Because he sappy. leaves that, yeah, sappy. He leaves that door open for you. Can you think of surefire cheesy songs? Paco Bell's Canon that goes directly to those feel good chords and then just sits there and milks it. Chopin is extremely cheesy sometimes. I don't know if you know the artists like Luis Miguel and uh, Chayang and those guys. Cheese. Their brains are made of cheese. Most of them are like crowd pleasers. Gilbert and Sullivan or Operetta, Deflata Mouse. Right, there's a reason why cheesy music is so effective. When pop music started becoming popular, you had the Archies and you had doing Sugar, and, and that's pretty cheesy. I think context is, is what's going to make something cheesy or not. If you were to take anything that people consider high art and put it in the wrong context, of course it can be cheesy. A lot of corny, cheesy television. I think the mixes are just bad. <laughs> Maybe cheesy isn't always a bad thing either. Another component is that it's not necessarily played that well. If you put a cliche in, in front of somebody that's an amazing musician, they'll probably make it sound good, even though it's something completely uh, unoriginal. Sometimes you feel like a nut, yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes you don't. When jingles were really a thing, you know, sometimes you feel like a nut. Of course, you gotta go for what catches on. So you're not worried about making your great opus, you're worried about getting a Reese's peanut butter commercial approved so that you can get paid. It would be bad if there weren't people that had that craft and did it well. So I think it's very important to acknowledge the different categories here. Quality, context, delivery, and emotional profile. So with quality, we're talking about a lack of refinement, formulaic things that are just not thought through. It's like a cliche but without knowing that it's a cliche. An ending that's very cheesy. And then they go. Straight formaggio. Playing the same lick all the time, especially when it's not good. Like, it shows I don't really have anything to do. And that's all I have in my bag of tricks. So in my world, the, the things, they have these things called tooties, which are, it's like an audio track where it's like a whole orchestra that People can just like, womp, womp. I didn't feel like working hard to make this sound good, so I'm just gonna use one finger and do this. 
it's a very cheap way to get something to sound big. With context, when are we listening to this music? What came before, after, both in the short term and the long term? You have stuff like Stranger Things where the music is great. It's perfect for the context. Reach the stars, fly a fantasy. But on its own, I think maybe some people would find that music a little cheesy. The way something is perceived as cheesy depends on its connotations in a collective understanding of pop culture maybe, but it also depends on what precedes it and what follows it because it can be used in an ironic way. Just like you said about outdated things. Yeah. I think it makes sense to make comparisons to fashion, art, and design, how trends come and go, and if you stick with something that has died off recently, it's considered outdated and uncool whereas if you wait long enough it's retro and it's again cool for example i hear a lot of 80s pop music these days the younger generation tends to look at older generations right, right, as right, right. a little bit tacky outdated but then there's a point where something is so cheesy it's cool with delivery and performance, I think of the word cringe. It's exaggerated in a way that is just uncalled for, unnecessary. As a pianist, you have to be incredibly disciplined to not give in to the... Indulge in that. Yeah, indulging in it. As soon as you start romanticizing Bach, it's, it's, it becomes sentimental and becomes cheesy. And, and it's so easy to do those with those beautiful tunes. We're gonna talk about this a little more in a little bit, so stay tuned. Now with emotional profile, it has a lot to do with fake, inauthentic emotions. Something that feels like it's manipulating your emotions. Something that's sort of over the top, emotional, without any sense of self-awareness. Love songs, things that are romantic, and presenting it as this one-dimensional thing. It just seems fake. As if something being cheesy is something to look down upon, but it's not. It can be comforting. Yeah. Just like Sturm und Drang. Sturm und Drang can be comforting. Well, it's so familiar. It's kind of kind of funny at this point. Yeah. It's lighthearted. And cheesiness can be perceived as a childlike quality, which is looked down upon because we're supposed to be like mature adults who do like serious things. Being jaded is also a bit cheesy, no? Yeah. So I think ultimately the word cheesy is now used as a blanket term to describe something that is uncool. I still think that there is value in asking why people think certain music is cheesy because we can gain insights for that that can contribute to us upping the quality of the music that we're producing. So regarding things to consider avoiding, cheesy interpretations is a big one. You don't want to romanticize Bach. It's all in the notes. So what exactly did he mean? Okay, so that is exaggerating, but it's really cheesy, especially starting from the offset, the bass and the top note separated. And I'm also over exaggerating the dynamic differences there and tapering it too much. You can play this in a very expressive way without all of that extra manipulation of time and pedal. Also, especially if you're using a software piano like I am here, the sound of the instrument really makes a huge difference. I would try to avoid tinny, dry pianos. Here I'm using one of the grand pianos from Arturia Sound Library. This video is not sponsored, but I do want to thank and mention them for sending this to me and their KeyLab 88. Equipment like these make a huge difference for times when you don't have access to a real grand piano or recording equipment for that matter. In terms of writing music and improvising, there are a host of things that one should consider avoiding. Not always, but Sometimes, swelling strings. This can be the most perfect thing, but it could just be too much. Anything that sounds like a Disney arrangement, but it's not a Disney arrangement. And these piano techniques that have a lot of arpeggios, oscillating chords, things like that, that are meant to sound epic, 
I think are too formulaic and I think they're cheesy. Using minor thirds and like a, a bluesy thing, you know, playing a simple lick like that and just kind of repeating it like, yeah, look at me. The simplicity is the cheesiness. If you did that in the middle of a solo and you developed it, then it would be fine. At least in terms of comp, a sixth chords. Stay away from that. Now, of the overused formulas, I would dedicate a specific category called pull on the heartstrings moments. For example, I think a minor four is cheesy. I mean, a minor four going to a major one. Why do I think it's cheesy? I don't know. I guess it feels nostalgic. I associate it with Rachmaninoff. Full of that cadence, and I play it all the time at home in my room by myself because it's my favorite cadence ever. It's cheesy. Diminish two, if you insert it in the right place, then it can just trigger that cheesiness. I think we kind of associate it with bad, but there's like good cheesy in a way. Like I listen to some like quote unquote cheesy music at the end of this movie Hercules and the arrangement and everything, it's pretty cheesy. It's like really goopy, but at the same time, it's great. Like I love it. I think in small doses, cheesy is actually kind of honest. It can unite people because they're aware of how cheesy something is, like the Macarena. So what have I learned? Cheesiness really depends on so many different factors. The category that I think is most useful to consider is quality. Regardless of your stylistic preferences and when, where you're listening to the music, you can always improve this. As musicians, this is something that is worth considering. If you are interested in watching more cheesy stuff, um, just go through my channel. Yeah, Nare Souls music, it's cheesy. Yeah, <laughs> really? of course not, of course not. How am I qualified to answer this at all? I don't Thank you so much to my patrons on Patreon for your continued support. Thank you for liking and sharing this video and subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video.